Starship is expanding to Florida, and it will land on drone ships. Did you notice the common link between these two developments? Both require a dedicated transportation system. That requirement has been known for a long time. However, recent comments from a SpaceX VP have now provided far more specific confirmation. So how will the Starship delivery system actually work, and when will it become operational? Let's find out on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Let's start out by explaining why this transportation system is so important. First, remember that SpaceX has launch plans in Florida with two complexes and at least three launch pads. These operations could begin as early as next year or in 2027. However, at the moment, we only see Gigabay under construction and the area does not yet have a full production factory. Because of this, during the initial phase, likely lasting one to two years, SpaceX will need to transport a large number of starships from Starbase to Florida for launch. That alone creates a clear need for a dedicated transportation system. Second, starships are also planned to land on drone ships. The planned landing locations are numerous, and many of them are far from the launch sites. All of these locations are considerably more distant than current Falcon 9 recovery zones, which increases reliance on drone ships. To reduce the number of drone ships required and allow them to focus solely on landing operations, SpaceX will need a separate transportation system to bring Starships back to land. In addition, SpaceX intends to include Starship in its Earth-to-Earth -Earth transportation concept, which would expand operations across the globe. All of these locations and missions would need to be connected by a reliable transport network. Given these needs, a transportation system becomes absolutely critical. In fact, this concept was mentioned as early as April of 2025 in the FAA's final tiered environmental assessment for Starship operations at Starbase. The document stated, after landing and safing the breakover fixture assembly, which is a controlled supported drop from vertical to horizontal, of the Starship would commence. This idea was recently reinforced by SpaceX Vice President Kiko Donchev in response to a post on X. The post asked whether a fuel tank transport barge could be converted into a Starship transport ship. Donchev replied, good eye. Still needs a little work before we put the name on it, but it was a good first trial run of a transport. That response strongly suggests that a SpaceX system currently used for fuel tank transport could evolve into a Starship transport system in the future. At present, that transport barge is named You'll Thank Me Later. However, SpaceX still intends to test its capabilities before applying it directly to Starship transportation. As you may have noticed, Donchev also mentioned that he has not yet thought of a name for the transport ship. We all know that SpaceX vehicles, such as Dragon or the drone ships, often have memorable names. So if you have any suggestions, share them in the comment section down below. One of them might even be chosen by SpaceX. Earlier this year, Donchev provided a more detailed explanation of this system. In September, he stated on X, While this would certainly look pretty rad, we are planning to break over both the booster and ship to the horizontal position for transit from Starbase to the Cape. Initial deliveries are a single booster or ship per trip, with the plan to move to multiple vehicles per transit sooner than later. You'll thank me later. This clearly outlines the Starbase to Cape Canaveral transport route. During the initial phase, SpaceX will transport one booster or one ship per trip. Over time, to improve efficiency, a single transport ship will be capable of carrying multiple vehicles at once. That sets expectations. So, what will the transport method actually look like? From a space efficiency standpoint, vertical transport similar to Falcon 9 would be ideal. However, Starship does not have landing legs. More importantly, long-distance ocean transport is heavily affected by weather and sea conditions, which makes vertical transport extremely risky. As a result, horizontal transport is the most reasonable and reliable option. This approach does require more space, which makes it less efficient, but it significantly improves safety during transit. That leads to the next question, what will Starship's transport vessel look like? Will it resemble Falcon 9 drone ships? Drone ships used for Falcon 9 are long and relatively open, with a large central landing area and support systems positioned mainly at the ends. The sides have minimal structures with only low barriers. That design works well for vertical landings. For horizontal transport, however, additional structures would be required. Even when lying horizontally, a vehicle can still roll under the influence of ocean waves.
waves. Side partitions or barriers would help secure the vehicle and keep it safely contained during transit. There are still valid concerns. For example, if early transport missions carry only a single prototype, or if the ship is not fully loaded, even side partitions may not fully prevent movement. A rolling vehicle could shift weight from one side to the other, potentially unbalancing the transport ship. This is a real concern when considering the dry mass of the vehicles, with a Starship weighing roughly 100 tons and a super heavy booster weighing around 200. Ultimately, SpaceX will need to address this directly. In my view, one solution would be to add a small number of fixed securing points to prevent rolling during transport. Over time, additional securing points could be added, which would also make it easier to divide the transport ship into multiple slots for carrying several vehicles. Another option would be to build a transport ship large enough that the mass of individual vehicles becomes relatively insignificant. Both approaches seem reasonable. In terms of overall size, this transport vessel will likely need to be very large, especially if it's designed to carry multiple vehicles in the future. Its scale could be enormous, potentially comparable to an aircraft carrier, which is quite the impressive concept to imagine. With such a system in place, we can expect to see frequent transport activity along the route from Starbase to Florida. If operations begin next year, each transport ship could make approximately five to six trips per year, carrying around three pairs of prototypes. In later years, that number would likely increase significantly. Given an average transit time of four to seven days each way, roughly two weeks for a round trip, plus one or two days for loading and unloading, this level of operation is entirely sustainable. Over time, the pace of transport between Starbase and Florida will likely slow as each trip carries more vehicles. Florida may also become increasingly self-sufficient once local manufacturing facilities come online. Even then, the transport system would continue to support drone ship landings, enabling dozens of transport missions each year. Which brings us to the question many of us have been waiting for. When will this system become operational? Given that the concept has existed for some time and SpaceX is already testing transport ships through fuel tank deliveries, it's reasonable to expect the first Starship transport operations to begin by mid next year. Between now and then, SpaceX would need to acquire transport ships and complete the necessary modifications and upgrades. This timeline also aligns with expectations for the LC-39A Starship platform becoming operational. So, are you looking forward to seeing this system come online? Let me know by commenting let's do it down below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to continue following SpaceX's journey forward. We've discussed all the positives, however, it's important to remember that the path to this future, even after the system becomes operational, will still be filled with challenges. First, there is the issue of acquiring suitable platforms. The required number will be significant. For example, transport between two regions alone will require at least two transport ships. To support drone ship landings, SpaceX will likely need at least four landing zones, with each zone requiring two transport ships. Acquiring such a large number of platforms is not simple, as they must meet specific technical and operational standards. The necessary modifications will also take considerable time. Because of this, it's reasonable to expect only around two transport ships to be available in the first year, primarily to support Starship transport between two regions. The transport fleet would then expand gradually in the years that follow. Next, transportation itself presents challenges because it intersects with other heavily used areas. As mentioned in a recent episode discussing landing drone ships on foot, regions such as the waters between Florida and Texas, as well as the Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific Oceans, are all extremely busy maritime corridors. SpaceX will need to carefully plan routes and operations to avoid interfering with commercial shipping and to prevent unnecessary disruptions. Additionally, during transport, environmental factors such as ocean waves can introduce vibrations that are difficult to eliminate, even with extensive support systems. History has shown that vehicles can fail during transport and 
and this risk cannot be ignored. As a result, SpaceX will need to perform continuous inspections and monitoring before transport, during transit, and after delivery. And beyond these points, there are likely many other challenges that will emerge as the system evolves. Clearly, once these challenges are overcome, Starship's potential will be immense. First, as discussed earlier, the transport system will provide critical early support by moving Starships out of Starbase. Florida is a central hub for the aerospace industry, and this transport network serves as the vital link connecting Starbase to that region. It will also play a key role in enabling and optimizing Starship's drone ship landing operations, which are essential for achieving full and rapid reusability. But there's more to it than that. This transport system is not merely a logistical solution. It represents the true scale of the Starship program. We have already seen a glimpse of this with Falcon rockets operating across multiple sites in Florida and California. Starship, however, takes this concept much further. Its operational footprint will extend beyond a single location. It'll span multiple sites, multiple states, and even even multiple countries. Very few launch systems in history have operated at that level of geographic reach. This expansion will support not only space missions but also potential military applications and Earth-to-Earth -Earth transportation concepts. This global expansion is what truly elevates Starship. SpaceX has long envisioned a future in which Starship launches with airline-like frequency, but at dramatically lower cost. As its reach becomes international, Starship will gain faster and easier access to customers around the world. All of this reinforces the idea that Starship is far more than a conventional rocket. It's a comprehensive transportation system that goes beyond traditional spaceflight. And this future is not far away. Over the coming year, Starship will undergo significant transformation, with SpaceX preparing to begin launches from Florida in support of upcoming lunar missions. Launches will occur repeatedly as key milestones are pursued, and at the same time, Starship's will be returning just as frequently. At that point, the transport system will enter a race of its own, working continuously to connect every part of the Starship program. The more the system evolves, the more ambitious SpaceX's additions become, both within the Starship program and across its broader infrastructure. Each addition, whether large or small, reflects SpaceX's relentless pace of development, and that is likely why SpaceX continues to lead the aerospace industry. Now, all that remains is to watch what comes next. And with that, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.